Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing another walkthrough video for one of the FMWC Battle of 16 Round 1 problems. This one's about rock, paper, scissors. Uh, and this one has a special place in my heart and my scar tissue because it's the one that I had to do on the live stream and I completely blew it. Uh, I spent about three minutes trying to set the data up in what I thought was a nice way and then it was going so badly that I just gave up and did it in a dumb way to try to get some points and still uh, you know, barely made it to 10% of the marks uh, by the end of the 10 minutes. Now, I do think this is actually a, a pretty hard problem uh, for 10 minutes, so e even now with the benefit of having some time to think about it, I'm probably going to take more than 10 minutes to do it, uh, but I'll hopefully do a little bit better than I did on the live stream. But if you ever watch these videos and think, wow, this it's so easy for this guy, just you know, go and watch my performance there and you'll realize that I can blow it just like everybody else. <laughs> so having said that, quick introduction to the problem, and then I will uh, give it a go. So uh, it's based on the game Rock, Paper, Scissors, which hopefully you've heard of. Uh, you know, basically two players each make you know a rock, a paper, or a scissors. Um, and rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock. Um, and so you've got uh, a bunch of kind of recordings, as you can see in these kind of, you know, little uh, emojis of the results of A and B playing uh, many rounds of rock, paper, scissors. And you have to, you know, figure out how many points each one of them won. And then later on, you've got a three player version and a four player version, and then a four player version with extra rules. So the, the rules for the three and four player version are if all three different symbols get thrown. So like in this one, for example, you've got a rock and a scissors and a paper. If all three different symbols get, get thrown, then it's a draw. And if everybody throws the same symbol, like this one here, where it's paper, 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 then that's a draw. But if only two symbols are drawn in total, then it's the usual rule to determine which of those beats the other. So here, for example, uh, scissors beats paper, and so C would win the round. Um, or here, rock beats scissors, so C would win the round. Uh, here, paper beats rock, so C would win the round, and so on. Um, but the twist is that if there are two winners, I'm trying to scan and find one here. I should probably just have found one beforehand, but never mind. Uh, if there are two, I can't find one right now. I'm sure there's one staring at me. Uh, if there are two winners, so let's say in other words, this was two scissors and one paper, for example, uh, then the two scissors would go through to the next round. So we'd, you know, if if these two people got scissors and this guy got paper, then A is eliminated. So you ignore this one in the next round and then you just compare uh, B and C to figure out who wins overall. Uh, and sorry, the reason I can't find any of those is because uh, the instructions say that only happens in the last 10 games. So that last part kind of ups the complexity quite a bit. So I'm going to, you know, if I were actually required to get this finished in 10 minutes, I would probably just aim to build uh, a solution to the first three and give up on the fourth. Um, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll try and show you a way to do all four parts. So having said that, let's get started. So I'm going to just put a game selector here. Uh, I'm going to figure out how many players, how many rounds. Uh, and I'm just going to build a quick lookup table for that. So you can see for the first, for games 1 to 10, there's two players, 11 to 20, three players, and 21 to 40, there are four players. So I'm going to say 1, 11, 21. Uh, so starting from game 1, there'll be two players, then 3, then 4. Uh, and then the number of rounds, uh, you can see there's always exactly 60 throws uh, if you count across. So in other words, number of rounds is just going to be 60 divided by the number of players. So number of players, keep using the lookup because it makes Dan Mayo mad. And that's always a good thing. Uh, and then 60 divided by that. Uh, and so I'm going to set something up that I should be able to use no matter whether it's two or three or four players. So we'll do A, B, C, D, and then we'll do a round counter going down the side. There's never more than 30 rounds, so we'll do it that way. Uh, and just freeze panes so that I can scroll down and not lose that. Uh, and then here's the fun part. Uh, if you index all of this, then my row is going to be uh, the game number, so dollar $C, dollar two match that against the game number oops sorry against the game numbers running down the side here and lock that in comma zero for an exact match and then uh, my column number I'm going to do a sequence so I'm going to have uh, the number of rows is going to be the number of rounds that's dollar c dollar four 
and the number of columns, $C, $3, is going to be the number of games. And so what that will give me is an array with 60 elements in total that's laid out in the right shape. So that's kind of the clean version of what I was trying to do on the day, but, uh, but messed up. Uh, now, so I mentioned before that if I had to do this in 10 minutes, I might just give up on section four where, where only some people progress through to the next round. The step as a tactical decision, if you're ever in a, either a kind of work situation or a, you know, competition situation like this, the, the tactical step I recommend in between, you know, building straight to the perfect finished product uh, and potentially running out of time versus totally ignoring the best case where you'd solve everything uh, and only building something that works for the first few parts and then completely breaks if you try to expand it. The step in between those, which I'm going to do here, is to leave a placeholder for where you would put the logic for a more advanced thing, but just don't build the logic yet. So what does that mean? I'm going to say, this. these are my inputs. Uh, then I'm going to say still in round, uh, again, A, B, C, D. And just for now, I'm going to make that one for everyone. So in other words, in the first three uh, levels, everyone is still in the round. But then if I want to make some logic later that you know actually calculates these and says actually B and D are out in this round, then all I have to do is update this. So that's still in round, and then it's throws for players in round. And just by setting it up that way, it makes it a lot easier uh, if I then come back later. So I'm just going to say if that equals one, then give me this thing. Uh, I'm going to say and double quotes because that means that these ones will come up as blanks rather than showing up as zero, which is what you get if you say equals an empty cell. Uh, if it's otherwise, double quotes. And then copy that down and across. And so now if I say, well, this player's out and this player's out, now I've got just the throws for the remaining players. So now the core of the logic for how I'm going to do this is you think about the unique list of throws. So it, like I said, if all three different things, rock, paper, and scissors get thrown, then that's a draw. If every player throws the same thing, then that's a draw. So if there's basically if there's three different things or only one thing on your unique list, that's a draw. And then if there's two things, you've got to figure out what to do with that. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pull out a list of unique throws. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to uh, first say unique of these four. Uh, and then uh, true is the second argument to do it by call. So here I've got three, here I've got two, and so on down. Uh, and then I'm going to concat that. Uh, to give me my list. And then the other thing, just uh, because I'm going to build a lookup table for this, so I'm actually going to also sort this. Uh, and again, I need to just put in a last argument true to do it by column. And that just makes sure that I get, you know, every time all three things are thrown, it's in the same order, uh, which makes it easier to build a lookup table. So now let's build that lookup table. I'll just put in a few more rows so I have space for that. So what's my lookup table? It's going to be throws and winner. So if everything gets thrown, it's a draw. Then I'm just going to copy this. Uh, and then all the different ways that only two things might get thrown, I just delete one of each of those. Uh, and then all the different ways that only one thing might get thrown. So these are all draws. And then if it's paper versus scissors, scissors cuts paper, Rock breaks scissors, oops, uh, and paper smothers rock. So that's how you figure out the winner, no, the winning throw. Uh, so we'll just say if that equals blank to allow for the ones down below, if there's, you know, empty rounds here, then blank. Otherwise, if you look up. And then I'll copy that down. And so here, every throws, everything gets thrown, everything gets thrown, thrown, draw. Here, there's only scissors and paper, so scissors wins. Uh, and let's see, what game are we on? We're on game 21, so it's early on, which means, yeah, there's only one of the winning throw. But we'll do, again, because I want to have the setup to allow for solving level four, so I'm going to say uh, 
whatever number of winners. And that's just going to be count if this, this. Um, so just so that I don't get four there, I'm just going to call that NA. Good. And then I'm going to give the number of points for A, B, C, and D. And this has the logic going to work. I'm going to say if uh, this equals zero, then zero points. Otherwise, if uh, this equals one, then actually, sorry. The so there's only ever points if the number of winners is one. So if that equals one, then if winner equals A's throw, then one, otherwise zero, otherwise zero. Copy that across. And we'll just format that quickly. So that uh, only my ones show up. Copy that down. So now I've got draw, draw, one person wins, draw, one person wins, and just double check, C wins here, so yes, paper beats three rocks, that makes sense. So then uh, I want the total number of points, that's the actual output I'm looking for, so that's going to be the sum of this. And again, you'll see there's, for level four, there's going to be feedback between, you know, cases where there's multiple winners, I'm going to have to then adjust this still in round section, but for now, let's just get to the output. So sequence 40, and then I'm going to do a data table. So data table basically just says, give me the value of these four cells if I change the game counter to anything from 1 to 40. Uh, super handy thing. If you don't know how to do it, go find out how. It will make your life better. So we'll do that. That calculates, and then and you'll see, obviously, it's, you know, every, C and D are always zero for the first 10 games because they're not playing. D is always zero for the next 10 games because they're not playing. Uh, and then after that, anybody should be able to score points. So that's the first, uh, that's the first three parts. And that's, you know, kind of just about within the, uh, within the uh, 10 minutes. I guess I would have to link them back. So I'll do that really quickly. Uh, so that points to there. And then... Uh, never mind, I'm trying to be too smart for my own good. So that's 21. So this is going to be 22, the next one down. Fill that in. I could do a lookup, but it's faster to just do it. So this one, whoops, copy paste. So this one will be 32. And that was what, 41, so this will be 42. So now I've got them all linked in, and I'm probably just about at the 10 minutes already, but we'll go over time anyway and just show how do we think about if there's multiple winners. So let's go on to game 31 and look at a case where there's multiple winners and figure out what we need to do. So here there's three different winners. So there's a scissors and three rocks. So the three rocks go through to the next round. So what am I going to do? Uh, so everyone's always in the first round, so I'll leave that as hard-coded, but I'll just uh, maybe turn those red to make it show that they're uh, unique, that there's not a formula. Uh, and then here, I'm going to say if, um, let's see, if the number of winners equals one, then everybody's in. Otherwise, uh, let's see, if the number of winners equals zero, then you just carry over the status from before. In other words, everybody who was in in the last round is still in. Everybody who was out in the last round is still out because the people who are out don't come back in until one single winner has been decided. So that, and then finally, if you, so you've eliminated if there's one winner, if there's zero winners, so now the only case left is if there's multiple winners. And in that case, it's going to be uh, their previous status uh, times, well, it's going to be, Okay, previous status is one, so multiply by, I want to zero that out if they didn't get the winning throw. So that's going to be one minus uh, A equals winner. Uh, close, close. I think that's what I mean. That's not what I mean. I meant the opposite of that. 
Uh, so then I can just drop the one minus. That's good. So yeah, sorry, that makes sense. So in other words, if it's a zero, then no matter what you multiply it by, it'll stay zero. So anyone who's out in the previous round stays out. And if this is a one, then you zero it out uh, if this part returns false. So false gets treated as a zero. So in other words, if they don't have the winning throw. So here, B, C, and D all have the winning throw. So they are ones going into the next round. A gets eliminated. And then, so here, where this was, uh, you know, there was a, a winner here uh, when everybody was in, but because A got eliminated, now everybody's doing the same thing, so that's a draw. So then, if I carry this down, oops, what I should see is, yep, uh, A is still out, and we carry on trying to decide, and then that third time we get one winner, and then hopefully we'll be back to everybody being in, and that works. So I fill that down, and it looks like there's one... Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, so beyond here, it doesn't matter what's going on, because we're out of out of games there's only 15 rounds i was thinking something weird was happening that they were holding so steady but no points coming up there so that's all good um so i think that's it let me just do one quick check uh so round one we've got a scissors and three rocks so nobody wins but the scissors gets eliminated we go to a next round everybody throws rock so nobody wins. We go to a next round. There's a scissors and two papers, so the scissors wins. So this should be the first point, and it's for B, so that's working. Then the next round, we've got everything gets thrown, so nobody wins. The next round, two scissors, two papers, so the scissors go through to a knockout round. And then the scissors beats the paper, so that's another point for B. Good. And then paper, scissors, rock. Everything gets thrown, everything gets thrown, everything gets thrown, so nobody wins. Then we've got Two papers, two rocks, so the two papers go through to a knockout. Two scissors, that's a draw, so you keep going with just those two players. Rock, paper, paper beats rock, so that's, again, a point for B. Good. Then we go on again. So we've got three paper and one scissors, so the scissors wins. That's a point for B again. And we go on. Oops, almost at the end. So here we've got two scissors and two paper, so we go on to a next round. The two scissors draw scissors again, so it's a draw. And it says in the instructions that if they don't get to a resolution before the end, then nobody gets any points. So that's it. You get three points for, uh, sorry, four points for B and no points for anybody else. So I think that's working the way it's supposed to. Uh, who knows? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll check the answers later. But uh, anyway, you get, you get the idea of the logic, even if I've possibly messed something up in the implementation. Uh, so that's it. Uh, it took me way more than 10 minutes to do that, even with the benefit of, uh, of taking some time to think about it after the fact, which sped it up a lot. Because like I said, in on the day, I only actually got uh, level one, which is the case with only two players, uh, and by far the easiest one out, and didn't even get far enough to get one result in uh, in level two, not to mention three and four. Um, so I did better than that, at least. Um, that's about it. If, uh, if you enjoy this kind of thing, then the next and larger version of the uh, of the Battle of 16 is the FMWC Open, and it's, uh, it's the first round of that is happening in a couple of days on Saturday, December 4th, and then over the week after that, there's going to be more knockout rounds and then ultimately the final. And hopefully if I do well, then you'll get to see me on the live stream at some point too. Uh, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for joining.